Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Select board for August 19th. The time is 6:31. Um, I will note that uh, here, physically in person, are myself, Gwen Tanza, Bruce Mello, Mark Bills, and Guy Tanza. Uh, and on the Zoom call are Joseph Dutton and then also the folks from FACT TV. We also have Leanne Parker from the Meeting House Committee joining us. Um, I had put on the agenda that I thought uh, Doc Maggio might be joining, but it's actually Leanne and possibly will be joined by Dan Towler in a little while also probably. Um, so first up is review changes to the agenda. Um, Joseph, did you want to speak to uh, adding an early agenda item for your proposed um, rules, additional uh, rules? Yes, yeah, I'd, I'd like to add to the agenda a review and then um, a vote on the proposed rules that I emailed to all the members of the board. Okay, and the suggestion with that is that that would be the very first thing we do prior to anything yeah. else. Tonight. Yes. Okay, um, let's just sort of poll people. I'm in favor of adding that and having a discussion about it early on. Gwen, what's your feeling? That's fine. Are you in agreement? Okay, Bruce? No problem. No problem with that? Okay. Um, Shelby is not yet here. So hearing a consensus, then we are gonna add that as the very first thing that we do tonight. Um, I will note Quickly, before we get to that, though, that there are no unscheduled members of the public. Um, okay, so then first up is discussion of um, what uh, is named in the document that, that Joseph sent around, Brookline Select Board Hybrid Online Meeting Rules. Um, Joseph, do you want to kick off the discussion about what you were thinking and just speak to it? Briefly? Yeah, um, what I was feeling is that we needed, we needed to address the nature of this hybrid online uh, select board meetings that we've been having to, to uh, undergo for the last several months and uh, just try to address some of the specific problems uh, that have arisen because of us not all being there in person. They, as David pointed out when I was discussing with this with him earlier, some of the rules and procedures are quite redundant to our regular rules and procedures, uh, but then some of them are uh, quite specific to the online setting. Okay. Um, I'd like to kick off, well, uh, my, I have some suggestions. Um, in my opinion, um, I, would, I like this idea and I do think that a number of these are good things that we should have codified so there's no confusion about how we're going to try to do things. But to my eye, the first one, two, three, four, five, I would say, paragraphs the last one being any member of the public that is unscheduled will be given two minutes on the floor. Those first five points, I think, are already captured in the select board rules of procedure. And I mostly think we shouldn't include those in an additional set of rules just because they slightly in a few places might contradict the rules, of, the, the rules of procedure that we've already adopted. So my suggestion would be to actually remove those first five paragraphs. But then other than that, I 
think it all makes sense and is a good idea. That's, I'll kick that off. Gwen, we'll go around and just give everybody a chance to quickly weigh in. Um, Gwen, what's your feeling about the, I agree with what's you. been presented? The, the, the first part does seem a little repetitive, so I have no problem with that. And you're okay with what's laid out for yes. the other rules? Okay. Yes. Uh, Bruce, what's your feeling uh, about it? I saw, yeah, I'm not too much of I have a problem with any of it, but I thought a lot of it was repetitious. What I don't want to see happen is the select board rules be superseded by anything on this. That's what you see. So if this is just a if this is just an online meeting rules, it doesn't really pertain to in-house because that's what it says. Hybrid online meeting rules. Um, I thought in a number of instances I can see one where I felt that the chair was restricted. I didn't quite like that. When discussing the issues, the chair will first recognize themselves to speak their opinion on a matter of two minutes. I don't particularly like the idea of restricting the chair to two minutes. I think you should be able to run the meeting on issues. So I didn't like that, that, that section. That's about the fourth paragraph from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, and everything else, um, you know, it's 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 hard to just to come, just to be done. It's it's hard to control a meeting that's over the phone. That's why I'm here. So whatever we want to do with the rest of it, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not going to be doing it on the phone anymore. Um, okay, uh, Joseph. Um, was there a reason that I guess just probably am I am I right to sort of keep things consistent with other places in our existing rules of procedure where we've where we've had a general process of trying to limit initial time for things to two minutes? Is that why you put in the two minute uh, restriction suggested restriction for? Each of the mem each of the board members speaking on issues. Uh, yeah, that that is why I put that in there, and specifically to the chair. Um, I think that obviously the chair will will speak their opinion relatively independently of the proceedings of the uh, meeting, and so. Like if, if you're calling for um, you know amendments or or uh, anything like that, that, that doesn't really go into your two minutes of opinion on on a matter. But I think that when uh, the procedures have all been laid out, and then we're moving into the board's opinions on a matter, the chair I believe should have the same uh, amount of time to speak as any other member of the board. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know. I mean, the other thing I'd add about this, I mean, obviously we have restrictions currently in the rules of procedure that, that limit members of the public to two minutes in discussion. And what I'll say as someone who leads the meetings, that's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a very fluid situation whether you actually enforce these things strictly or not. Um, I mean, I think we all have always and will continue as long as I'm part of the board to, you know, encourage people to have an opportunity to speak, board members or members of the public, and complete their thoughts and get their ideas out without having a stopwatch going for starting and stopping people's time. So I, I, I can't really imagine that we're going to be enforcing that strictly under most circumstances, if any circumstances. So, you know, I don't have a problem with just it, it being in these rules as just a suggestion that, and, and a reminder to people that, okay, let's, let's try to make our points brief and then give everyone an opportunity before we go back around and have further discussion on it. So I don't really have a problem with it. And I, like I say, I can't see uh, sitting here with a stopwatch timing everybody to make sure nobody goes for three minutes. Good point. Mm -hmm. um, Joseph, are you uh, okay with my suggestion of removing the first five paragraphs? 
Yeah, I think that makes sense. That okay? I, I didn't really consider that uh, some of the contradictions might very well be just from phrasing. And so, yeah, exactly. Right. I don't think they were intended, but it just, yeah. Um, so the only other suggestion I would make um, is that perhaps we rename this Brookline Select Board Additional Rules for Hybrid Online Meetings. To emphasize the fact that these are additional rules, not the only set of rules, and to make mention of the fact that we do have a, a set of rules of procedure that we adopt every year and that we should be following apart from just these additional ones. Is that do you have any issue with that, Joseph? Or does that make sense? No, no not at all. That makes sense. Okay. Gwen, does that make sense to you? Very good point. Okay. Bruce, does that make sense to you? Yes. Um, um I can make a yeah. Well, I think Bruce, you want to home, try to home the point uh, that as well, everything I've read today, the select board rules and procedures, there's very little online on the BSA statutes, at least I couldn't find them. But the overwhelming consensus and thrust is that the chair controls the meeting. And I just don't want to restrict that. So, I don't it. think it was restricted. Yeah. No, I, did, I didn't read any of this. Okay. It was restricting. Okay. Um, but I, I, I see your point. Um, okay. Uh, Shelby has just joined us. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. No, that's okay. So um, we're in the midst of discussing the... Um, proposed uh, rules, hybrid rules that Joseph sent out. I'll summarize briefly. Um, by consensus of everyone so far, we are um, proposing to eliminate the first five paragraphs in Joseph's document. Um, so, yeah, the first five paragraphs, because they overlap or are redundant with points already laid out in our rules of select board rules of procedure that we've already adopted. Um, and beyond that, uh, we're also going to slightly rename it to Brookline Select Board Additional Rules for Hybrid Online Meetings. But now that you've joined, what's your feeling about adopting these and the tweaks that I've just suggested? I'll give you a chance to speak to that, Shelby. Um, yeah, in general, in support for how, oh, I'm sorry. Um, generally in support. Um, I honestly haven't had a chance to look at them in too fine detail yet. Um, so I'm kind of looking through them right now. So I'm happy to defer for a minute while you guys keep discussing and then have a moment later. Okay. I think we're pretty much. Yeah, I think we're pretty much at the end of our discussion now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Been discussing it, so. Yeah, no, I think that sounds, I think everything sounds fine as long, as, I, I like the overall intent, so as long as the eliminations were due more to redundancy than anything, I think that sounds okay. Yeah, that was the only reason to eliminate that, because the, the first, the first five paragraphs are all points which are covered in almost the exact language, but slightly different language in some cases, as what's in the rules of procedure, so the, 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 wish to eliminate them is just not to create confusion or possibly any slight appearance of contradiction between the two sets of rules. And then also by, by specifying that these are additional rules, it harkens back to the fact that we do have a set of rules of procedure already. Um, Joseph, did you have something else you wanted to say before we uh, move forward? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, all right, then I'd like to make a motion that we uh, adopt what we are now going to call the Brookline Select Board Additional Rules for Hybrid Online Meetings, um, which is in the printed copy that we all have starting with paragraph six until the end. Uh, is there a second to that motion? I second it. Seconded by Gwen. Uh, is there any further discussion of that from anyone? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the Brookline Select Board Additional Rules for Hybrid Online Meetings as amended signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, and I might have just violated the very first part, one of them, by not doing a roll call vote, but that's okay. I'm going to still stick with the premise that, that, that unanimous votes I'm not necessarily going to do a roll call on. Um, okay, so that takes care of that, and uh, I'll just add that Dan Tyler has joined us. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Um, Board members. Uh, so next up is approving the minutes from the August 5th meeting. Um, Gwen and I were just discussing that uh, once again Shelby has been omitted from the minutes because of whatever slight she made to Peter Barris. <laughs> I'm going to start taking it personally. In a previous lifetime or this lifetime, so we'll make sure that Shelby gets added. Uh, down under the approved minutes, we're just going to move the little A minutes from July 15th header up above uh, the rest of the text. And Gwen pointed out that Arlington paving in the grid is uh, misspelled. We'll correct the spelling of that. And then on page two, uh, another couple edits that Gwen noted down under the pay orders August is misspelled. We'll fix those. Other than that, I did not see any other changes that needed to be made, and nor did Gwen. Bruce, did you see any other changes to make? Uh, SLP building update, second page right in the middle. The last, last sentence, there was, it's together. Oh, yeah, okay. And then go down a little further to summary of the reports by Mr. Kanza. Um, Second to, I believe, yeah, second to the last sentence, Mr. Brimmer. Oh, yeah. I don't think he wants to call So not only is he omitting you, but then he's calling you Mr. Brimmer. <laughs> you, you need to patch this up with Peter. Um, <laughs> okay, well, my dad didn't have any son, so we'll let it slide this time. Okay, so that's, that's for him. Yeah. Uh, Shelby, did you have any other changes uh, that, to the minutes other than what we've noted? Um, Was that a no, Shelby? Sorry. She said no. Oh, did you? Sorry, I said no, but I was on the, yeah. Oh, sorry, that's okay. Sorry, I didn't quite hear it. Sorry. Um, Joseph, how about you? Any other changes to the minutes other than what's already been noted? No. Okay. Uh, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes from August 5th as amended. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from August 5th as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, then those are approved. Uh, moving on to 6A of new business, the SLP painting and staining bids. Um, we received three bids. Uh, which we will open now. Um, I'm just checking that. The first bid is from someone in Windsor, Vermont. Um, and it is a bid from David Shaw uh, of Windsor, Vermont. Um, I will read a great deal of these, perhaps not them in their entirety, but I will read quite a bit of them for the members that are not here in person to see them. Uh, he says, start date September 12th, 2020. Uh, pressure washing and scraping, including laying tarp and plastic securely around building and cleanup of all paint chips and debris. He breaks out the cost of that. Priming, he breaks out the cost of that. Painting, he breaks out the cost of that. Bulkhead and skirt, including pressure washing, painting, and priming. He breaks that out. Uh, entryway, he breaks out separately. Uh, he then breaks out the addition back side, which is two big sides and end, um, which he breaks out separately. Weather permitting plan on every weekend until the job is complete, he says. There will be two or three of us on the site at all times, all insured 
proof of insurance will be provided when the bid is approved. His total bid is $5,940. Um, I'm going to pass this down to uh, Mr. Mello for him to take more of a look at. So that was $5,940 uh, for David Shaw. Then we have another bid from Norm Holden, which is going to be a little more difficult to read because it's handwritten. Um, it is a paint bid for the exterior of the Brookline School, two specs. Um, I am not going to attempt to read all of his detail about his labor and what he's going to do. Um, some highlights that equipment and materials to be supplied by Town of Brookline. Um, he thanks us for the opportunity. His bid is $16,000. Um, That's close. I'm going to pass this as well down to Mr. Mello for him to take a look at. And the last bid is from Mominy Painters um, for 624 Grassy Brook Road Project. Um, it says the building at 624 Grassy Brook Road contains lead paint and needs to be treated according to the U.S. EPA Lead Renovation Repair and Painting Program. Mommy Painters is a U.S. EPA lead certified, lead safe certified firm and is trained in the use of lead safe work practices. The cost for us to do this project is fourteen thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and includes a further detailed list of improvements in the scope of work and specifications, which I am not going to read in its entirety. Um, I'm going to pass this now down to Mr. Mello for his perusal. Give a second for Bruce to look those over, and then we'll um, I'll have him kick off the discussion. on the phone can literally hear the crickets that are outside. <laughs> Here we can actually hear crickets. Okay. Hmm. Oh. Um, so I guess the, f the first thing, I, I after saying that, I will in fact kick off the, um, at, but it'll be a question to Bruce. After having read those three proposals, um, do you feel that they are all proposing the same level of work and detail based on the same specifications? Yes, except. I'm gonna hang on one second. I'm gonna ask you to really speak up as much as possible because oh, I think it's gonna be harder for people. On the Shall we can you hear me? Um, you, you are certainly, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How are we doing? 
I'll exercise my big mouth a little bit here. How's that? Better. Okay. Shelby, can you hear me? Are you there, Shelby? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I just had to unmute. Um, you all might know that I did a lot of work on this. Um, and in the interest of transparency, I sent you all at least the emails that I sent it to Norman and Mo. Every, and Norman wanted to bid on this and he wanted to bid on this, so that was no secret. And same with David Shaw. David Shaw, of course, is the guy that used to work on, on Susie's. He's, he's actually the husband of Angela, who is the director, I believe, of... Yes, go ahead, Mike, go ahead. Secret. My question was one mentioned uh, um, lead paint, but none of the, the other two did not. Do they, are they both qualified to deal with that? Are they all both under the... Um, that's, that's the crux of the matter. Okay. And the direct answer to your question is, I believe, no in the case of David Shaw. I'd have to call Norman, but I'm almost certain that he is. He's been in business for years. Uh, is that why the difference in price? No, I don't agree. I should have to get Okay. I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of little issues here, and I really, I know we don't want to go on through this for 45 minutes an hour. Right. So I'll try to be as concise as I can. But, uh, Mo Mamadi called me back. Uh, he was not going to bid on it, and he uh, misunderstood what I said to him in the email, and I urged him, you know, wait, you know, it's not for this year, it's next year. And then he was on vacation, he was down in the islands or something, and when he came back, he called me and we met, and I met with him this morning. And I was here physically to see that he put the, put the um, bid on the counter. Saying that, we've been over this building for no less than four hours, he and I, before. We were only together 20 minutes or something. He has a little pencil, a thick pencil, as a felt tip on it, 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 it tests for lead paint. It's very simple. He puts a little fluid in it, touches whatever wood he wants to sit, wants to do, turns red, you got lead. The way I understood it, and I think I've explained in previous light war meetings, I had two, I had checked this out. Mo said the only thing that he saw, this is back when, not today, was on the windows. I said, we're good. We're getting mad at it. So we're, we're good with that. I had no idea that we had any other any other issue with the where with were the light. other places and uh, for what I understand it's just the old building on the trim okay okay now I believe Norm I'm almost certain Norm is certified you have to be certified by the EPA we could pay serious fines anyway I almost started working on that going outside I started scraping if you look at the end last year until I found out through Perkins Lumber whoa don't touch it I could be fined three or four thousand bucks mm -hmm. so on so forth so anyway, to, to get to, to get to the question about the lead paint, because that's that's really the big deal. To decide that, I those two, and probably not Dave Shaw. I'd have to call my husband if, if we chose to choose him for that. I doubt it, and it's not a complicated process to become certified, but that's what's a cog in the wheel. And like I told Dave Shaw, like I explained here, there's no care to do this building. The, the qualification to me, running this project, is to do it right. We can engage the safety of kids, and it has to be done right. I have, well, I don't know Dave Shaw's work that well. We discussed this a little bit before, and I basically would have to watch him. The other two, I have extreme confidence that both of them will do the work. It's in light of what Norm's just, Norm's just done for me with the windows, and I'm all Welcome me all take a look the, of the work that he's doing. Right across the street, Peter Meyer's house was done by Bo Mame. As you go down the road, the yellow house on the right-hand side was done by, by Norman. That's, excuse me, past, past James Ingram. It's a custom in the acres, and he did 18 acres, too. And Bo Mame has done, just to give a little history, uh, has done the New Fane Town Hall. He's done the Senate, the Senate Congregational Church in Dunderstone. And he's kind of legendary in this industry. Okay, there's a, there's a stick right here. And this is the stick one. I created it. And it had to do with has to do with materials and the lift. Materials I don't think are a big deal. 
because the amount of paint stain to stain to do that going is $43 a gallon for stain at WW right now. I haven't, I haven't shot. So as far as cost for materials, isn't it a major expense? It might be, let's say, 1000 bucks, $1,500. It's not a huge amount of money. And both these bids with is with the town paying. That's right. Paint. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to be in charge of making sure that somebody didn't bring over a gallon of paint. I didn't let on that building. That was that was especially in light of of Dave Shaw. And I wasn't I wasn't uh, minimizing his quality or anything like that. I just wanted to make sure. The second key thing is we need to rent two things. Uh, I don't think uh, we would have to do that with Norman and Momami, but we need a gas power generator, uh, gas, gas power pressure washer. I called, I called two round places yesterday, but Home Depot's got three of them, and basically what you want is a gas fire generator, a vector power washer. They have an extension of 18 feet, not a problem, $65 a day. But you don't know if Norm Holden or Mominy have their own pressure treater. I would guess that they do, but I um, I have to clear that up with that. But I would be surprised if they didn't. Okay, the more the, the real stick with today is the lift. And this well, I'll, I'll back up from that. Okay, but I would argue the real stickler is the lead paint. Oh yeah, and I, the I, certification yeah. to deal with lead paint. Sure, because right, other I, than Mominy. No one else says that they are certified, but okay. we don't know that with certainty. Fair or do we know that with certainty that that David Shaw is not certified to work with lead right. paint? Do Fair we right. know that definitively? No, I do not know. Okay, I'm, like, I'm guessing he doesn't have any BA certification. We need that. Okay, but what are we going to do? Question. Because we have questions on if people are certified, how can we pick a how can we pick a bid if we're not sure the other two are qualified? Right. I mean, honestly, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons we can't pick a bid. That being one of them, but then also the equipment part of it being another, I guess. So maybe well, okay, maybe so this is going to be need need to be put on next week clarification, so that you can clarify who's certified. Are they going to do the, the pressure treater? Do we have to provide the pressure treater? You know, maybe just get a few more details. I have some, but I can clarify what you're talking about, about the lead point, which is the, which is the most important thing yes. in my opinion. Right. I was talking about when I met the stick, what I meant in terms of cost. Uh -huh. And yeah. Mo Mommy wanted to spend $4,000 on, on a lift. I can get a lift, a 45-foot lift from Brown. Mm -hmm. Brown uh, up in the yeah. London area for about twelve, thirteen hundred a week, and that's a big far difference between four thousand dollars. So to your point, Gwen, I need to hammer out these these yes. these questions and maybe revisit. I will oh. revisiting on the September second is not a bad idea. From Okay, so actually, let's just let's just give Shelby and Joseph a chance to yeah. weigh in a little bit before we before we move to that point. Um, Joseph, uh, any initial thoughts before we quite likely table this until the next meeting? Yeah, I have uh, two two things. First off, a question surrounding the equipment. Um, how, why? Would we, why would it be beneficial for the town to try to rent equipment for a contractor? It just seems like it's a, it's an extra failure point and um, point of confusion in this entire situation. That's a question for me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because in light of the independent person that what I needed to do that just for that situation, in light of the other two, I haven't mentioned it to, Nell, uh, to Norman, but Mo would get his own equipment and stick us with a real shot in, in, in terms of price. So to me, here we go back to stickler money. That's a major issue because that's a major cost factor. Can I just can I just ask when we and maybe sorry, uh, did we in the specs that we gave these people, did we tell them that we would be providing the equipment? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that can be clarified. Sorry, Joseph. Go ahead, Joseph. Joseph. You had another point. Okay, just, just to finish out on the equipment and then my other point. Um, 
it, it is concerning to me that Lamini would uh, would say that he could provide his own lift, but at such a steep price when we can easily, anyone can easily find a lift for, you know, less than half the cost. So, so that is something that's a, a little concerning to me. It seems like there's some sort of uh, failure of communication. Um, and then my next point is, is a little uh, bigger picture. It's taken a few steps back, but as I'm, I'm sure you're aware, I was not really in favor of putting this bid out or doing this painting this year. And one of the things that, that came up in my mind was all the way back to the windows. And I obviously wasn't in favor of refurbishing the windows. So I, I thought that was a poor investment. And one of the reasons that was given to refurbishing the windows rather than purchasing new windows is that five thousand extra dollars is not something that we had in the budget this year. It, it wasn't something that many people were comfortable in spending extra on this building this year, and so I'm a little concerned as to why we're now contemplating spending up to sixteen thousand dollars this year. It seems like uh, I missed something here. Um, well, I guess I would suggest that in light of the fact that we have, we don't know really what numbers we're talking about for any of these bids at this point because of the equipment unknown and also the certification unknown as to whether all three of these people are even qualified to do this work. Um, I would I suggest that we table this till the September 2nd meeting when Bruce can get more follow-up details from these people and we can know exactly what we're talking about financially. And then, yes, I agree, then there is a discussion as to whether we should spend this money anyway. But at the moment, we don't even know what but amount we would even Look at this money wasn't supposed to be spent this year anyway. The That's painting's right. not going to be so done until next year. Correct. Mm -hmm. Except in the light of danger. Whatever the reason. Right. There's I mean, there three, is three somebody who says he could do it right now. Yeah. Right. And we have the money. Yeah. Right. I mean, even that was out the, uh, even that was out the $4,300. Yeah, even that, without the $4,300 that the was being paid, we, we have the money in the budget. Yeah. It's still, have, things have to be oh, clarified. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it, I mean, I guess I'd say at this point, though, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's my suggestion. We table this until September 2nd so that we can know all of these numbers. We can also have a very thorough accounting of what is in the building account as of that point, as well as we can make some projections to next year. And then we can have a more fleshed out discussion about them and it it will go where it goes based on um, what we all want to do. Uh, Gwen, are you in, have any problem with that? Bruce, do you have any problem with that? No, I don't, but I just want to respond yeah. to a couple of things. Right? Just stay very quickly, because we're going to discuss this all again. Yeah, yeah, I, know. I was kind of blindsided by the lead issue. Yeah. I was kind of blindsided by the lead issue, because I had two two before it gets even more yeah, instances yeah, yeah. of one was Marshall Omar and the other one was Omar and there's no lead to go yeah. Yeah. Now as far yeah. what really surprised me, Wolverine goes that which kind of blindsided me. So what I think you think you want to keep was the numbers. It, initially, it's, uh, it's, I got, this is, it goes to a bunch of clarification. Initially, I only gave me a price of thirty-seven thousand bucks. Mo Mama gave me a, a price in the twenties, like no, not even to complete the bid, bid, building. So that surprised me more than less. Okay. And that's so I, yeah. I wanted to get that out and then I'll tighten it up and get the Good job. Okay, uh, Joseph, are you okay with that approach? Tabling it so, and then we uh, shall be all right with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, all right. So we'll table further discussion of this until the September 2nd. Uh, I'll just take copies. I'd rather have the originals in the office. Okay.
Now moving on to seven, or sorry, six B. Um, the and apologies to people who are online. So I'm moving my laptop around to try to get the microphone closer to everybody. Um, uh, moving on to 6B, Meeting House Historic Building Registry. Um, Leanne had to leave because she has another meeting at 7 o'clock. Dan Tower from the Historical Society is here. Um, everyone should have received and hopefully had a chance to review um, what Leanne and, and Dan circulated, which was both the quote from the historic preservation consultant, as well as, hey guys, Guy and Mark, you either need to go outside and close the door to talk, or oh, I'm sorry. not, because it, it just resonated. Yeah, um, uh, so the quote from the historic preservation consultant, and then also the background about the FAQs about the National Register of Historic Places. Um, Dan, do you want to speak briefly to um, how the Meeting House Committee got to this point and what uh, you think the generally benefit of this would be spending this money? Yes, thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I. Uh, Shortly after I uh, became involved in this committee, I, um, it occurred to me to wonder why uh, the meeting house, or whether the meeting house was listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and um, I learned that it was not. Um, I don't know how much you all know, certainly you're familiar with a little bit about the uh, National Register. It's uh, uh, federal listing, um, the National Register, in case you didn't have a chance to look at the frequently asked questions that, uh, that I sent over, um, the very first sentence is administered by the National Park Service. The National Register is the official federal list of districts, sites, buildings, structures, and objects significant in American history, architecture, archaeology, engineering, and culture. Um, National Register properties have significance to the history of their community, state, or the nation. So, um, I looked up uh, uh, buildings or structures on the National Register just for the heck of it in uh, Windham County. And there are uh, 98 of them. Um, our own round schoolhouse uh, in Brookline was uh, added to the Register in 1977. And uh, the Old Brick Church up in Athens was added to the register in 1979. Uh, the only other item in Brookline is the Iron Bridge over the West River. Um, and uh, I wondered why, if anyone had ever uh, looked into uh, nominating the meeting house, uh, or if it had been tried and uh, rejected for listing, or what. Um, but. Um, I called the uh, Division for Historic Preservation in Montpelier, and they uh, let me know that um, uh, the building uh, has not been ever uh, nominated or, uh, you know, applied for. Um, and uh, the person I spoke to up there, the State Historic Preservation Officer, referred me to uh, a guy named Devin Coleman, who is the State Architectural Historian. Uh, he and I communicated back and forth, and um, uh, he was familiar with the building, but had not ever seen it. And uh, about a week after we were in touch, uh, this is a year ago right now, August of last year, he uh, had uh, a scheduled visit with the uh, Dutton Farmhouse over in Dummerston. Um, and uh, so he offered to come by and meet me. Uh, at the meeting house in Brookline and take a look at it. So he came by, we, uh, you know, I showed him through the building and he was very enthusiastic about it. Um, he said, definitely this should be on the register. You know, it, it certainly would qualify um, based on its, you know, history and so on. And um, he also stated in an email uh, we recommend that you work 
work with a historic preservation consultant who is familiar with the National Register program and listing process to research and write the nomination, take the photos, and prepare the maps. I guess the nomination process is quite complex. The, uh, the application form itself is 16 pages, which he sent me a copy of, uh, but there's also a uh, National Register bulletin, uh, sort of a handbook for how to complete the National Register forms, and that is 125 pages. Uh, so um, that speaks to the, I guess, uh, you know, expertise perhaps required to uh, to accomplish this uh, application process. So um, he also sent me a list of historic preservation consultants um, in, around the state who uh, assist with uh, nomination forms. And uh, there were two people listed in Wyndham County, and I reached out to both of them uh, and actually only heard back from one. Um, and that was uh, Paula Sigerman, who uh, lives across the river in New Hampshire, but she has done a lot of work uh, in Vermont. Um, she's been a historic preservation consultant for over 20 years, has, as her proposal says, uh, she has produced National Register nominations for 18 individual properties and 14 historic districts and has assisted with uh, nomination of the uh, buildings, including the first congregational church in Townsend, which was successfully uh, listed in 2002. Okay. Um, so I think this would be a great thing for, for the community of Brookline and for, for the meeting house. Uh, to be on the National Register. Um, it actually does not automatically uh, qualify us for anything special, um, but it certainly uh, would, I think, be uh, assist in uh, grant applications to say that we are, you know, listed on the Register. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, a recognition of the importance of the building to the community and the region. Um, and um, the, there are no uh, restrictions that come with listing. That's something that uh, some of our committee members were concerned about. But um, the building, uh, as a result of being listed with the state, which it already is, um, already has a layer of restriction that uh, would prevent us from you know, severely altering its historic character. Not that we'd be interested in doing that anyway. but. Uh, there are no additional layers of restriction that go with being on the National Register. So there's really no downside uh, that I can see. Um, and it would be uh, it would be a cool thing. Um, and in our cap and uh, for the community and the buildings and perhaps a help to uh, raising money in the future. So uh, we're, we're proposing uh, this to you as the select board just to um, see if there are any questions or concerns about the listing of the building for one thing and also proposing to you to finish with this uh, uh, lady's uh, fee for assisting us with this application yeah. uh, which is 1500 bucks. Okay. Um, and um, uh, our committee is in favor of the nominated to speak for us on this so. Okay uh, and there was so was it uh, there was everyone on the committee was in favor of this? Yes. Okay great. Um, let's, we'll, we'll go around quickly. I'm going to kick it off. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, I mean, I'm in favor of it. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good expenditure of money. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out uh, on the uh, proposal from Paula Sagerman is, you know, she says payments will be due within 14 days of invoice date. We need to let her know we can't do that. We won't be able to guarantee that speedy of payment we're a municipality it's we can't pay things that quickly so she needs okay. she needs to understand that that kind of timing won't necessarily be possible sure. um other than that i didn't see i didn't have any questions about the process it all makes sense i didn't really have any pro any concerns about her uh qualifications for it either we'll just go around um gwen Questions or comments on? I have no questions. Okay. Are you in favor of it generally? I think so. I think it's a it's a important step in in realizing how important the age of the building is. Mm -hmm. 
So I have no problem with that. Okay. Bruce, how about you? What's your thoughts? My thoughts are, first of all, Dan, thank you. You're doing nice work. Um, I so much appreciate it. Hi, Dan. Hey, boy, you can't see me. <laughs> I can't see you. Can't no, how are you? Um, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for taking the, the time and the interest and the work. Um, back when I asked the meeting to resurrect itself, the, uh, the group to resurrect itself back in July 2014, I wanted to ask, answer two of the questions that you raised. The first one was the cost. We at that time, when we were considering going for grants, didn't go for um, for two reasons. The cost, and, and, and I jumped to that, to have enough money for matching grants. And the second thing, which I talked about the other day, she clarified me, that it makes us available for federal grants. We were under the understanding that that wasn't the case. After looking at the paperwork that you sent through, um, I didn't read it verbatim, but it, I read it pretty, pretty well. I'm totally in support of it. Uh, doc, doctor uh, made me aware that it does help us with federal grants, which is great because we could maybe get some, maybe get some grants for paying it. Thank you to Lee Ann for getting, a, I don't know if everybody knows this, getting $3,000 grant for, from Wyndham Foundation for the... Yes, Bruce, I was going to mention that I, I neglected to do that, but uh, thank you. If you've seen our minutes, uh, you're aware of that already, but yeah. uh, but we did recently receive, a, if I may, a, a $3,000 grant from the Wyndham Foundation, which uh, helped us previously with the uh, restoration of our windows uh, three years ago or four years ago. Uh, so we're very happy about that. We we asked for a lot more than that, but uh, you know that's what they gave us, and uh, we were very pleased with that. Um, and we intend to put that towards the restoration of the steeple, which is going to cost quite a bit more than that, but. Uh, We'll just uh, have to go back to the well and apply for some more money to get that done. Okay. Um, that, was, that was primarily Leanne's work, that yeah. grant. And, yeah. uh, so we we're happy about that. Okay. Well, um, just to finish the loop on this, though, uh, Joseph, what's your. Do you have questions? I just want to say. I'm okay, to this is, okay, so Bruce is just reiterating that he's in support of this. Joseph, what's your. Uh, uh, any thoughts or questions? About yeah, this I, I don't have any additional questions, but uh, I, I do think it's a really good idea, and um, thank you all all the members of the uh, committee for, for doing this work. Uh, Shelby, how about you? Yeah, same. Um, I think it's really cool. Um, I think it's amazing what you guys are doing in that building, and I think it would be a good idea to get on the register if possible. All right, excellent. Um, so then I'm just to formalize it, um, I'm going to make a motion that we, uh, I guess, that we approve uh, the Meeting House Committee spending $1,500 for the um, Historic Preservation Consultant work to uh, complete the nomination for the National Register for the meeting house. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Yeah, I second it. Seconded by Bruce. Uh, any further discussion from anyone? Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the meeting house committee spending $1,500 for the historic preservation consultant to prepare the nomination for the National Register for the meeting house building um, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Um, so yeah, Dan, thank you very much to you and everybody on the Meeting House Committee for all the hard work in general and specifically on pulling this together and uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that it all goes quickly and smoothly. Yes, Thank yes, you. we certainly hope so. We'll certainly keep you apprised. Uh, I also forgot to mention, uh, Paula did uh, offer to come to one of our meetings uh, for, uh, you know, at her own, on her own time mm -hmm. and discuss this with us, which she did. Um, oh, so we've had a chance to speak to her directly and, you know, so anyway. Uh, thank you very much, uh, board members, and uh, thanks for your, your service to the town as well. Thank thanks, you. Dan. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, all right. Moving on to 6C, the uh, discussion of the recycling site. Um, so what 
precipitated this uh, was the situation from last Monday? Uh, yeah, it's from Monday ago, ago Monday. I think, yeah. Um, that but it's an ongoing thing. It, right, although I guess, I guess I have a question which was, in that situation, and I don't know that I've seen this happen before myself, um, am I correct that someone opened the dumpster? Yes, yeah. this has happened well, three or four times. Okay. And last, the last time was really where the, the, I don't know if it was a prank, that the, uh, the trash was all over the back. I sent you photos of it. Yeah. Um, it was pretty nasty. So, and I spoke with Peter at the uh, one, I'm sorry, at the Triple T Trucking, and, you know, see if there's any way that he could suggest how we could uh, eliminate this from happening. And he said it's, uh, you know, maybe they can put a, a lock on it or something. Um, but, it, you know, things like this happen. But, um, as I said before, it seems that we're using more and more, more and more people are using the dumpster than uh, should be. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm getting a little tired of cleaning up every week and taking care of it. I do it, but it just gets old, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. Uh, you know, at the rate we're going now, I think we'll be over budget with the, the dumpster. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what the future holds for us. Um, I mean, on that note, I guess I'll just I'll just say that I did get a report of all of the activity, all of the recycling costs for the last fiscal year, which ended June thirtieth, and you know, it's costs float from one the end of one year to the beginning of another year slightly, but I will I will say that we are actually we did end up possibly slightly under budget for the last fiscal year. Our costs were a little bit below $18,000, which is what we had budgeted for that fiscal year. We've budgeted $22,000 for this fiscal year. Granted, the, the tonnage fee has gone up in recent, a ton now. recent months. Like 150, um, 152 is what it is at currently. But tell us that. And we were at 119 at one time. Uh, right. you know, I mean, it's gone up. I mean, obviously, that's yeah. partly why we've been budgeting more money from year to year is because the cost of And the trucking's up. going up. Um, I guess yeah. the thing I'd bring up as far as the site is concerned, and I know we've mentioned this before, you know, we have budgeted money um, for cleanup of that site. Okay. We could look into, and I think at one point Joseph was going to potentially check in with somebody who he's had, uh, has a little bit of a relationship with, who does some trash collection in the town, as to whether we want to consider paying someone to check out that site once a week or whatever frequency it, we might need to do it and clean up the garbage that's there so that our town clerk doesn't have to keep doing it. Amen. I know, but by the same token, I, I hate to see the town spend money that, you know, um, I, you know, I've been doing this for five years, and it's, it's it, sometimes it gets frustrating, that, you oh, know, yeah. and, that, and that's what yeah. happens, you know, I get frustrated, I get angry, and then I do it again next week, so, uh, you know, but um, I, I still think that by keeping the site clean and picked up, it eliminates a lot of other people doing that same thing. There's that two or three people that no matter what you do, they're gonna they're gonna be nasty. Yep. You know? um, yeah. Are you um, Bruce? Do you want to? Did you have yeah. thoughts on this? We, we spoke about this months ago. But is your implication with your wording that if we were to remove the dumpster, you think we're gonna have a worse of a problem? I I personally think if the dumpsters were removed, people will, are so ingrained in dumping there that they will continue to do that and for quite a while. Finally, it will probably go away, but it's going to take a while. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. There's only two towns in our district that have dumpsters. And, uh, you know, it's um, at the cost is going up. It's escalating each year. And I, I don't know what the answer is, to be honest with you. But we spent 5000 4000 for the wind and solid waste. We're spending 22000 now for our budget. So we're up to twenty-six, twenty-seven thousand dollars $27,000 a year. That's a lot of money for a small town. Yeah. And, it is. I mean, I guess the thing I just remind everyone is we had a vote on this at yeah. town meeting, and the townspeople voted by one yeah. to continue to offer this. So, um, 
They seem to be. You know, the cost, it was something that the town was willing to bear. However, the town is not, that doesn't mean that you as an individual need to bear the responsibility of cleaning up the trash that accumulates in that. So, I, wonder if you want to I understand, I understand your point and, and I know we've talked about it before and I just want to reiterate that at any point in time we can look into hiring someone to be more involved in that so it doesn't always fall on you. I want to see if we can eliminate the dumpster being open. That is a big, that's a serious thing and I, I think yeah. it's a prank. I think it's somebody that's just for whatever reason have nothing else to do and they just want to, you know, play games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if we can eliminate that, that eliminates most of the problems. Right. And, you know, trying to, you know, figure out the dumpster when we should pick it up when Thursday comes around and I have to figure Thursday, Friday, Saturday yeah. before I call them. It's sometimes hard to do. So, you know, Monday we have a, a, an overflow situation. Triple T Trucking has been very good with us. They've worked with me. They usually send a truck when I tell them I'm in dire straits. So um, that's helpful. I guess, like I say, uh, if we can eliminate the the problem with the kids or whoever's doing it, uh, that would be great. And hopefully Pete um, will come up with something. We'll go, I'll get around to everybody else, but just Mark really quick has uh, something. Quick, uh, I, I just wondered, I, would it be possible if, if the town paid, bought a padlock, have you put it on it when the new recycle bin shows up and when you call take it off yeah if he tells me that he's going to be here on a tuesday i can unlock it and you know i don't have to wait there because yeah. their schedules but yeah I, I i i think that would be a good idea I'll, I'll throw that at pete and see what he thinks about it you know if it's not yeah, an inconvenience for him i mean i feel that idea. since the COVID 19 virus thing has, has come we definitely have way more traffic in town than we have ever had yeah. before. Yeah. Okay. They're coming from every state in yeah. the United States. Yeah. Our town. There was a big truck there today. It looked like a, oh boy. a painter's truck, or not a painter's truck, but a construction mm -hmm. truck. Uh -huh. You know, the big, the two, two, not a box truck, it was a truck with like two boxes not on the side. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was emptying out some. Yeah, that, yeah. that's, so, I mean, uh, on all of our sides, we're really putting out in Putney Mountain. Uh -huh. Way more out of state traffic than I witnessed other years. Yeah, there's no so I, I think um, seeing it. Uh, Joseph, uh, any thoughts on this, or just want to make sure you have a chance to weigh in? I don't really have any additional thoughts, and it is a shame that we have to continue to deal with this problem. But yeah. Um, yeah. Shelby, how about you? Um, I mean, so, Guy, don't we pay, I mean, in theory, aren't we paying to pick it up, whether it's you or someone else? Because you're a paid employee? I'm not, no, I don't get paid to do that. No, no, no. That's not part of my, uh, my program. <laughs> you only get paid for... It's work you're doing for the town. Okay. Not, not on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He gets paid for Tuesdays um, and Thursdays. I just say that if it's going to be an issue that's going to keep coming up because it's making people so upset, I, I think that if we've already budgeted for it, I would rather spend the nominal amount of money to pay someone to clean it up. Because at the end of the day, we can bring this up every other month in a meeting, but unless we want to reverse a part of the budget that the town deliberately made a point to vote for, this isn't going to, we're not going to stop having the recycling or the potential issues that come up until the next town meeting if they choose not to have it. So if it's really that, you know, that frustrating, I think we should just hire someone to do it, especially if it's budgeted for, because I don't, I, I kind of don't want to keep, we, we don't really have a solution. There's not really a solution. We can't put in cameras. We've kind of been through it all. It just sort of is what it is. And I don't really want to, part of me just doesn't want to keep having to rehash it and you know, get the email with the picture every few weeks. Like, it, it is what it is. And unless someone has a new idea, which it sounds like every time we bring it up, no one has a new idea, I would rather just kind of table the conversation, hire someone to clean it up so they're being paid and they don't, you know, it just, that's their job and they're getting paid to do it. And then we can address this again at town meeting. And maybe bring up these concerns that it's not as simple as just whether or not we pay for it, it's also, 
a, a place where people are, you know, behaving disrespectfully to our town. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Um, Guy, I, I mean, I don't want to throw this back on you, but should we more seriously look into finding someone who can go uh, by there? I mean, I know that the prob or someone that can be on call when you see something rather than you having to do it. I know the, the, the exact timing I know is going to be challenging. Yeah. The because biggest you problem see something when right you drive now by or is, uh, and I think Mark has is, is got a good idea, and I'll run it past Peter at Triple T Sorry, yeah. is to put a lock on the back so no one can unlock it. Mm -hmm. And that could eliminate some of the problem. As far as people dumping there, it's going to be there. So uh, I do it because I try to save the town a few bucks, and I also have a little pride in my town, and I like to make sure that it's clean around there. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that I bring it up from time to time, uh, just expresses my frustration with it, and uh, maybe if more people became aware of it, they would maybe keep an eye for people that are doing that and stop them from doing it. And I have noticed that even Guy has noticed that occasionally Guy says somebody picked it up. Yeah. So somebody other than yeah, him some other people been have been uh, when they saw yeah. a problem. They yeah. Guy said somebody actually picked it up and put it in there. So that I think we just all uh, then the community needs to do some responsibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's true. Okay. Um, well, so I think I think we should look into putting the lock on to at least as long as Triple T doesn't have a problem with that, which I can't imagine they will, because that will at least, like you say, maybe yeah. if that can eliminate the, the sort real of catastrophic problems that can happen to it if somebody opens it. Do you think the reason they're opening it is to retrieve nickel cans? I, I, I really don't know. It almost looks like it's a prank. Yeah. Because you know, it looks like they just awful. dumped their food yeah. down. Ha, 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 ha. See you later. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's what I think, but I, uh, that's pure speculation. But we, but we can't change it until March unless we have a special a special no, meeting of 5% of the... I have to have, no, have a thing of 5%. There's no sense of doing that. Your idea is yeah. great. All these ideas would mediate, would mitigate the problem until we get to March and then we can spread that way what the town is. If it was only one vote last time, there's a real good chance you could get rejected next year, but we'll have to wait and see. If we have a town meeting, even well, I think what, uh, what dictates the vote will be that's the, another, the cost. Yeah, that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, we'll put a, I'll speak to Triple T, see if okay. he says we get a lock, and if he says so, I'll just go buy a bad lock. Good. Thanks, guys. Good, good, good. Um, okay, moving on to 6D, the um, letter from the Vermont State Police. Um, so I sat around the stand of it last week. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to, to read it. I mean, to summarize, um, you know, they are making an effort, which they have been making for quite a while, um, to be sure that as much as possible that their policing practices are non-discriminatory and uh, that they're, I think, to their, to their exact wording that, you know, they're trying to keep things safe, uh, Vermont a safe, just, and welcoming place for everyone. They're soliciting feedback from towns about how the towns wants the state police to function or be structured or whatever concerns people may have, I think. Um, I will freely admit, having read it and having read their website, the, the Fair and Impartial Policing and Community Affairs section of their website, I honestly don't know personally what I would even ask them to do, um, but that's me starting off, I guess. Let's go around and see if anybody has any thoughts on uh, how, if, and if so, in what manner we may respond to them as far as what our towns 
uh, needs might be. Gwen, what's... Well, I agree with you. Thoughts? I think they had a, a pretty good aspect of what they're doing. And, and we. the only thing I think is we would like to see them here more often. But you can't have them here more often if they don't have the, they don't have the help. So... Mm -hmm. That's my only comment is we would like to see them a little more often in town. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to work. They don't have the, the officers to do it. No, uh, but Bruce, what's your thoughts having read it and pondered it? Well, I, I didn't read that, but I can respond to what you're talking about. And Mark and I was with, with witness a uh, guy going crazy one day when you were using your equipment. And I was just after something past me doing 50 go, going past here. So I guess what I'm stating is that uh, it's a free-for-all in the town. I think they should know that. I don't know if that's going to change the way they police, but they should know. It's a free-for-all on Gracie Brook. And as to Joseph has said times and times again, it's just a matter of time. Somebody's going to be walking or walking a dog. Yep. Someone's going to get freaking clipped. And, you know, I wasn't so, so excited when Joseph brought it all up last time because we discussed it before, but uh, I'm now very much in agreement in his thought process about what's going on in this town, and I don't like it. Um, you know, I have a tendency to go quick too, I'm not going to be, but I don't go passing somebody on Grassy Brook Road with canoes on my roof, flat out full floorboard, or popping wheelies in their ginseng lane. Well, I don't know if anybody saw the rubber. That was of the tread marks in front of Jensen Lane. But go ahead, yes, Jensen Lane. Uh, at, at Lane. I've already I seen the state police right. in town twice let's, this week. Yeah, let's try to stay That's on it. topic for. The, That's it. That's all the, I have to say. This yeah, it's a free fall in town, and they should be aware of it. Okay. Um, Joseph, how about you? What are your thoughts on um, this? I, I think this is a, obviously a pretty complex issue. It's. Uh, affecting the entire country and mm. I think one of the interesting things that we live with is that uh, we hear the news from so many uh, of the population dense areas that have their own problems with uh, law enforcement and I don't think that those are always um, the same problems that we deal with. One, The one suggestion that I could possibly have for the state police is that I'd like to see some sort of uh, more dialogue, not necessarily a dialogue, but a community style policing between the, the VSP and the um, citizens of Vermont because um, in all my dealings with them there, they're very friendly and, and professional, and, and a letter like this is a, a good example of that. But I just feel like it, like your average uh, person in Vermont never gets to see this um, this side of them. So my suggestion would be that uh, I think people would would see what kind of people they are and that they're really trying to help if, if they could figure out some way to um, communicate more directly with the... Uh, the citizens of this town and um, the rest of the state. Okay. That's good. Um, just making some notes. I'll maybe able to do that at town meeting. Um, Shelby, how about you? What are your thoughts having read that and given it some thought? Um, I mean, yeah, pretty much what's already been said. I think that. I think right now the issue around policing and stuff is a lot bigger than some of the stuff that's happening maybe in our town. Um, but I think being a rural town that's geographically isolated from our local police department, like Bradford, like that, that actually has a force, I think that um, that is something that we're missing is, you know, cohesive support from the law enforcement around us. Um, and really being able to have our residents feel like they can access those resources, I don't think people feel like there's really anyone they can call and get um, support from for law enforcement if they really need it um, in our town. So there's clearly a gap there, even if like I've had a bad experience with them, I, I, I just definitely don't think that people in the area think that they can just reach out and get a lot of support and support in, like, in a manner that would help them 
in the moment. Like, that moment, mm-hmm. which is what we saw with, like, Meryl Drive and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. or the, you know, that situation. You know, the, call, the answer is to call the, you know, call the police, but there's not a lot of faith, I think, in that that's going to do anything. So there's definitely, um, I think, some outreach they could do, um, and there's a way that they could be more of a presence in the community that might make them more approachable or a resource that's more heavily used it when it's needed. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to suggest that uh, possibly not for the next meeting, possibly for the meeting after. I'm going to, I've, I've taken some notes about what we've all sort of said, and I'm going to make an attempt at writing a letter of response back to them that incorporates all of these things, mm-hmm. and then we'll circulate it and we can discuss it possibly at the September 2nd meeting but more likely the meeting after on the 16th. 16th or whatever it is. Yep. Dave. Uh, yes, Mark, sorry. Um, speeding is always a topic in uh, at our meetings, and I know that state police have come to town and they'll set in certain areas, but I wonder if we made suggestions as to where they should set to the places where the people of Brookline know where the speeding is taking place most dangerously. I mean, a lot of times I've seen the, the state police set in slow mile per hour zones and try to get somebody doing a couple miles an hour over 25. Mm-hmm. Where it's in the 40 mile an hour zones where they're doing 60 and plus miles an hour. Mm-hmm. If we recommended areas where it's more obvious. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that it's not an issue at at the low speeds, but it right. seems like there's right. certain areas where they can pick up mm-hmm. speed and and they just get away with it time yeah. after time. So um, maybe something like that would be uh, helpful for them. Yeah. And and also what time of day? You know, I I know right. I don't know how they make their schedule up for for Brookline, but if they learned when the speeders were actually. Like, right. is it mornings? Is it late in the afternoon when people are getting out of work? Is it during the middle of the day when these people who don't work are just speeding? But maybe we could just guide them to go after those type of people. No, that's, that's a good point. Um, okay, uh, any last thoughts on that before we move on? Once, twice, gone. Okay. Um, now moving on to uh, old business. First up is a building update. Mr. Mello. Okay. I can work through this, I think, pretty well. Building number one. Here. You and I need to talk about the mice thing. We'll work on that on the side. Uh, my, my suggestion is that, you, that the select board should consider putting air conditioning here, in here for next year. Um, in light of, I bought two standalones for my house, so I think it cost me 900 bucks, and they are great. They're economical, you can plug them into the wall, I can have one hooked up in here in 10, 15 minutes. And it waits. I'm just sick and tired of coming in here and seeing people that are above 50 years old sitting in a room for 12 hours a day, putting up with an uncomfortable situation. So that's kind of a tickle with me. So it's something that we should consider for next year or soon. And as much as we got a capital improvement fund, 4300 bucks, or we could work some other way out of, of financing. But it's not an ex- expensive proposition, and I think we should give utmost consideration to the people that care enough to come in here and sit in here for 14 hours of the blow on the hours. Sorry, guy. guy. Thank you. A, a day. That's it for that. Now, to move on with the round schoolhouse. I did call and talk to Stephen Haskins. We met. He gave me some linseed oil. He told me how to treat. We do have still have powder post beetles. It's not bad yet, but we still have them. He said we're gonna have to treat them over a period of time. And what I saw didn't make me happy, and that's why I initiated it. And also, I wasn't too happy with the cobwebs, the mold. I heard a couple of pretty good ideas. The first good idea I heard came from Mr. Wellman that said we should consider putting a a solar dehumidifier in there. I think dehumidifier, no matter how we do it, we should do it. 
I'll go into electricity in a minute, but... Um, Can I just ask, has there yes. been a discussion with the Historical Society about that building and the cobweb and mm -hmm. other situations? Not that I know of. I did talk to Doug directly. Okay. I saw him right right when I met with Stephen Hassett. He happened to take a package up in my house in this place for the post office and we talked about it. And he's the one that came to tell me about his idea. Okay. Can I, sorry, Go not on. to interrupt you, but no, Joseph, has the Historical Society met in recent months at all? No, we have not. Okay. Is there a plan for it to meet at any point? Uh, not currently. We, um, I mean, we all see each other uh, in an unofficial manner, but yeah. we haven't uh, really considered planning a meeting. I, I think uh, COVID obviously has just um, shaken up everybody's plans for sure. the year. Yeah. But if that's something that um, that we think that the board thinks we should do, uh, and it seems like maybe uh, we have a few things we could discuss, uh, I can uh, see about setting that up. I mean, or honestly, I mean, if, if you just, if, if you guys have these discussions, I mean, I know Bruce has had some of the discussion with Doug, I just want to make sure that you're, you weigh in on that discussion from a historical society standpoint, as well as Cynthia, if, if she is able to just weigh in on these things before we go too far down the road of deciding some stuff on our own, that's all. Yeah, I, I think that um, uh, Bruce and I, I kind of mentioned this uh, last uh, meeting, we never really got around to it, we're both uh, pretty busy, but if you want to, if we want to just exchange a few emails about the specifics of okay. um, what, you, what you'd like to do, um, okay. we, could, we could certainly, I would certainly be happy to discuss it with um, with you and then with Doug and, and Cynthia as well. I, I certainly think that it would be good to have us all in the conversation. Okay. Okay, sorry. So now to go back to you, Bruce. Sorry. Okay. Sorry for that. That, I, that'd be fine. Um, I also wanted to suggest that maybe we should consider one or two more people on the, on the committee just to help out. In light of, I think we should have some kind of a maintenance program for the building. I really don't like walking in a building and pushing the cobwebs away and seeing mold and, and a 1902 Encyclopedia Britannica, like Stephen Haskins said. You better do something about the mold in this place. And so this all needs to be talked about and considered. But I think a little help on the committee would be, in light of, of two of the three members on the committee, work a lot. I certainly can understand that. And the third member of the committee is 87 years old. So I would think that it would be advantageous for the committee to consider adding one or two more people on it if it's possible. And then I can also send you the ideas that I had um, that I just spoke about, Jeff Joseph. And one other thing, the electricity. We looked at that pretty closely. And we actually have a possible three needs of electricity in three in the three buildings around the schoolhouse the church and so susie's susie's got specific issues especially one specific issue to straighten out the, the heat in the in the uh, in the downstairs one section doesn't work i try to thermostat and work on it myself in life that i've i plumbed and wired a building myself in my own home but it was a little past me. I don't really have the testing equipment and stuff to find out what the heck's going on and what the hell they do with that building. So that's up to an electrician. The second part is the church got me made aware to me that, and you don't know this, that Perkins um, Perkins Gas met with her last Friday and it's going to make a quote for putting heat just in the addition, but they're going to need to have some kind of electrical on them. So that's the second need for electric. The third one is if we consider putting an outlet in or do something over, over there when they're out to the schoolhouse, which might be a little bit more costly because I can't find any overhead wires. So that, that brings up a whole set of challenges. So uh, my obvious thought is maybe we can consult one electrician to look at all three situations and figure out what the total cost of all three things are and split it according to the to the funds accordingly. Okay, now lastly, uh, Susie's Filipinos. We're 
moving really well along with these windows. They look really good. And Nor uh, uh, Norman's just about ready to give us the last 12 sashes, six, six windows for us to to put in. Dave's, Dave's let's just look at my hero, has done an incredible job um, refurbishing the sashes, straightening out the cords so they go up and easy so the ladies in there can lift the, the, the windows easily. And within the next couple of weeks, we should have all the windows that are facing the street framed off with new wood, which we found out, which I think I knew and was verified today. The old, the old boards were lead paint. So my original idea was to scrape and repaint and then we took it out. We, re we replaced it 100%. So that will be done. Uh, and I think I got a phone call today from uh, an email taken from Olivia. Some pipe was banging downstairs, so I sent um, Scott Bowl back and an email. I have a phone call, and hopefully he responded to it. But other than that, oh, the dumpster. They, they responded, very pleased with the reaction. They took my considerations. Yeah, like they used the plywood way I suggested. In fact, they even improved it a little bit and moved it in a certain way that would make it a little tighter. Hey, I, I'm, all, I'm all for improvements and better ideas. Nice. So, and they cleaned up their mess. That's great. So this is all good stuff. That's very good. Um, it's very good. And I think that's about it that I can think of right now. So in the next couple of weeks, we should have the windows down working. Functional again, not disrepair like our friends from Anderson Window said that they were, but they're not going to be in disrepair anymore. Awesome. I think that's it. Great. Thank you. Well, Good thank job. You. Yeah. Short and sweet. Yeah, I'll just make sure I got it next. So don't, don't be good. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, okay, moving on to. I, did that I have nice. a quick question. Yes, yeah, Joseph. Sure. Um, Bruce, I'm just curious uh, how much. Extra money is being put into the windows on top of uh, the bid that we had. I know. I know that we discussed that Dave was going to do some work on just the ropes and um, everything. Uh, I'm just curious if we're keeping track and uh, and how much that extra money is going to be. Yes. The answer to your question is yes, and the answer to your to your price, I think, you get an exact price answer. But he had done some work before he'd done the windows. I'd say we're into him maybe, oh, I can give you exacts, but I don't have that in front of me. Because I haven't gotten a bill for the last two weeks, which isn't a lot. He's only $15 now. Maybe four to $500 labor at the most. I have rang up a bill at WW, I want to say for $100. Um, and we're just about at the end of it in terms of cost. So just the labor time to complete what he's doing, maybe... The next two weekends, about 100 or two at the most. So, okay. well, I, don't, I don't mean to. Uh, I can't give you exact I, I, about I don't mean about. To, to, to pick too much at, um, at things that, that we've already voted on, but it's. Even if it is uh, under $1,000, that is a, a cost that's. Um, I think goes hand in hand with the price of refurbishing the windows. Mm -hmm. So, it, it just seems to me that. Uh, you know, if we voted on fifty-five hundred dollars, if my memory serves me, that at the end of this, it you know might be sixty-five hundred or more or less. I just think that it's a little, um, in my mind, it, it it changes the equation a little bit. Fair enough. Uh, I I guess I would just I would just uh, point out that we did. Uh, I mean, unless I'm mistaken, the bid to repair the windows did not include uh, the, or to, re to repaint the windows, did not include anything about opening and closing of the windows. And I, I understand your point that if we had gone the route of replacing the windows, then that's cost that wouldn't have necessarily needed to be incurred because the new windows would have opened and closed on their own. Um, yep, it's a, it's a fair point to make. I guess I'd suggest, Bruce, maybe do you think by the next meeting will all of Dave's work on those be complete? And could you give us... 
an accurate accounting of I, what I, I, you paid him to yes, do? Yes, I can. I give you an exact amount. I okay. Give exact, I got all the receipts. I can give you an exact amount of what took me, what I what for boards for, for the change in the frame, which was a good move. So. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Let's follow up with that because it would would be good to know exactly what that kind of all. And you can look at the total total total. Because we're going to give him a check for fifty five hundred bucks, and my guess is we'll be a little over six for the whole thing, but we'll see. Um, was that the only um, comment, question you had, Joseph? Yes. Okay. Uh, Shelby, anything, any questions for Bruce before we move on? Uh, no, no questions. Okay. Um, okay, moving on to, to 7E, the education tax rate tax bill status. Um, Guy, correct me if I'm wrong, I've, I've been checking, we still don't have a tax rate, an education uh, tax no, rate. No, we do not state. as of 5 o'clock this evening. Uh, I was hoped that uh, we would be looking at it this Monday or Tuesday, but yeah. Monday was a state holiday, uh, an Eaton day. So we're hoping sometime this week that they will finally get to us and uh, maybe next week generate a tax bill for the residents of uh, Brookline. Um, logistically, because I don't, I mean, I've never, since I've been the town, we've not had this situation. When we do get an education tax rate so that we're able to actually generate tax bills, how are we going to decide and who is going to decide when those tax bills will then be due since okay. we've now blown past everything that was voted on? Uh, the normally our, our tax day would have been August 15th, but the governor signed some sort of some sort of some piece of legislation giving towns the authority to move their collection dates, even though they were voted at town meeting, to what it is. So the law is firm. It says 30, 30 days, days from the day that we mail it, you can collect the first payment. So what I'm hoping for that we will have a payment in September, and then we will go back to our normal November, May, and I mean November, February, and May. That's the hope right now. Okay, so, but, and procedurally, do we think that, let's just say for the sake of argument, just to pick days, let's say we got the education tax rate set by the end of this week, and we did the, the treasurer and others who are involved and knowledgeable about the printing of the tax bills determine okay, we could get these in the mail by 25th of December. X date. Are they then empowered to set the due date as 30 days from that date, or do we minimum need, of 30 do, days? Right, okay, but so, do, or do we need to warn a special? select board meeting, an emergency select board meeting, in order to set that date? Or does the treasurer have the ability to do that under the, the law is clear provision, the changes the procedure, that uh, But Scott as far as made. if the select board has to, in fact, set a new date, that's a question for Vermont League Cities and Towns, yeah. which I will post. I think we should start yeah. asking that yeah. question, just so we know just so, yeah. we need to, I, I've been or telling whether it can be set without that. I've been explaining to people that once we create the tax uh, rate and we generate the tax bills, we will mail them out, and 30 days from that date will be the first due date, you know, in general. So, but I will check with VLCT and does, see does it have to be if there's that something. Um, I, like I say, the government well, just like who has who. Who, who, like has to that, to who has to set that date? Is it the select board or can the treasurer set that date? Okay, I will I will get that and that will give us enough time to, uh, I'll have it for the next meeting, if not so. Right, well and presumably if things were to move quickly, we might have to have an emergency select board meeting on mm -hmm. Monday in order to do that or something yep. like that if, if we are in that situation, I don't know. But yeah, have, if you could look into it. We only need a quorum to do that. Right. Right. Um, okay, thank you. And let's just hope that um, it, yeah. they do it pretty quickly. Um, and, and at this point, we have not yet, I mean, I assume we've seen nothing 
do we do we know when the school board when we anticipate the school board sending us a bill? <laughs> well, normally it's it's every it's twice a year, and uh, I don't know if they firmed up a day yet. I think they have to take in consideration that the towns have not right. had any revenue, and it's predicated on us. I, I, I assume revenue. they understand that that um, whether or not the towns pay those bills yeah. when we receive them will be and that's what dependent I'm, on when I'm we can that if, collect the taxes ourselves. Oh, if we have this a, is a problem that was entirely created by the school district yeah. and the state, not the not us as a town. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah we'll cross that bridge. Um, okay. That that segues into your general update report, guy. Um, well, as we there? know, the uh, we had the Vermont State primary election on the 11th of August, and it was a a busy time. It was a hot and humid day. Uh, we had 135 voters. 85 of those were absentee ballots. Uh, the county got a little disarrayed in the uh, late evening, but uh, we did well, and um, it was a precursor to the general election, which is uh, in November, and hopefully we'll have the same five teams to count. I really would like to go over a few things, but I think we're going to have a large turnout because the state is going to mail every registered voter a ballot in November, so uh, they'll start mailing them. It's September. There's been a lot of scuttlebutt all over television, all over radio. The bottom line is that our state is in good shape mm -hmm. and uh, we have a good Secretary of State mm -hmm. and I think we're we're in good shape for November. So that has definitely been decided that they are mailing everything. Oh yes, that is. Okay. And people still may vote in person using the same guidelines that we've used for the primary, a mask and sanitize <laughs> your hands and People have been very uh, good with that. So, so how does that work? Issues. They bring the ballot that mm -hmm. they get? Now, what will happen is that if you elect to vote absentee, which you'll get in the mail, you will send it to your town. The or town drop it off to the town. Or drop it off or mail it however you wish to get it here in time for the general election. And we will enter it into the election system. Okay. And you will see on my voter page that your ballot has been here. And it's, uh, it's been uh, ready to be counted. But what my question was, for those that want to vote here, do they bring that absentee ballot? No when, you, no, when you come here to vote, you can bring the absentee ballot with you. You certainly can. And drop it off here. That'll save you from waiting in line. You just drop it off. We check you in. We check you out. And that's it. It's easy. Mm -hmm. So there's no, no issue at all. But it is worth probably mentioning for the record and for any townspeople who watch this, and we can perhaps remind them as we get closer that if you are going to bring an absentee ballot physically here, you need to have followed the absentee ballot instructions yes. and have it sealed within the envelope yeah. or else it will be disqualified. And signed and filled out. Well, they've, they've right. changed the seal. The bottom line it has to be in the envelope. But the most important thing, and I can't emphasize this enough, we had five defective ballots this uh, this last uh, election because people did not fill out the envelope. We have highlighted it in I yellow. Like We've done everything we can for you. But if you want your vote to count, you must read the back of the envelope and, and make sure that you sign it and put in the information they're requiring. That's all you have to do. It takes all of two seconds. But you have a choice. Okay. You can either go that way. Or you can come here and get assistance. Yeah. You can mail it, you, you can drop it on the office. Yeah. You have the physical assistance yeah. here on premises. Yeah. We did have somebody that needed help. I'll bet. Um, <laughs> anything else, Scott? No, that's it. Uh, and it's the office has been busy. We've had a number of uh, real estate transactions going on. People are taking advantage of low interest rates on mortgages. And there's refinancing going on. So it's been a busy time in, in the town, but we're doing well. Great. Thank you. Um, moving on to 9A Highways and Roads, Mr. Bills, what's going on with you? Okay, so uh, we have been installing culverts in the past couple weeks. Uh, we're halfway through the culvert inventory that we purchased under budget. Um, that's going very well. The new 
minted machine. Uh, accomplished a lot of uh, things that were on a general list of uh, to-dos with a piece of a machinery, piece of equipment. And so uh, that that is going rather well. Um, we I noticed another sign missing in town uh, on Ellen Ware Road, off from Hill Road. We're on our third Ellen Ware Road sign in, in one year. Jeez. So I have to place another order for that sign. Uh, this time I'm going to do it a little differently. Hopefully Put it up high enough they can't reach it? <laughs> uh, yeah, they got a few 15 ways. feet or something. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up tonight is uh, I've heard from the winning bidders of the paving mm -hmm. and the milling and they were thankful for the, the wins. Um, and then Archie has also talked with them. We set up a meeting. Uh, we met last night uh, with the paving uh, people, which is all state basketball, and it looks like their schedule through our town is going to be September 14th, 15th, so it'll be mid-September. The, uh, the Millings guy, um, Brian Ciano, uh, he called to see about uh, when he could start the milling process, and after talking with Archie, uh, that's when we decided to meet with the paver to set him up at a close, mm -hmm. approximately, uh, so there's not a, a big way to between. Yeah. So Archie, uh, after we gathered the information last night, Archie said he would call the milling company to uh, see if he could get them to cooperate with uh, the other person's schedule. So okay. if everything goes according, our, our paving should take place mid-September. Well, great. Okay. Um, we we showed him all the, the highlights to the job mm -hmm. that we felt was worth knowing. And he gave us a lot of input on that. Um, and I just wanted to say on the... Uh, I've used this uh, rental machine to do a lot of different things. Is you know cleaning plug culverts, uh, correcting uh, ditches that have eroded and causing uh, road erosion. Um, it's just a, a very nice multi-tool. It's it's everything that I thought it would be and more. Um, this machine has a. A push blade you can use like a bulldozer uh, so after you dig a trench in the road to pull up the used culvert to apply the new one you can use the blade to push dirt back in. The blade also has a, a trailer hitch mounted on it. So I've been uh, pulling my utility trailer which is 12 feet long. Um, when the uh, Before we did Bob's culvert down the road here past uh, Bapu's Lane. Uh, we had purchased uh, four one inch thick steel plates to uh, buy us some time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using two of those with every culvert job I do in order to keep traffic flowing. Uh, we put in one culvert on one side of the road, then once it's graveled, the gravel's still. Uh, not compacted to its mm -hmm. finest point, so we put a steel plate over that lane to allow trucks and to cars to, and it's working great. So I've, I put these steel plates on the trailer, then I put two culverts on top, I've got all my road signs, my shovels, uh, power equipment, everything I need to awesome. do the job goes right with me out. That's great. When I come back, reload it and back it in the garage, it fits in beside the grader, mm. and it's all loaded ready for the next day. Yeah. Excellent, that's it's, great. It's really doing a, a nice uh, 
very efficient. So I'm, I'm just continuing on with, uh, with all my uh, uh, water bar outlets on the roadsides, cleaning those, and uh, everything's going as scheduled. So awesome. And you have the you have that excavator for another for the, week. Yes, Somebody? another two weeks. Two weeks. Yes. Yeah, right. Because it came late, right? Yeah, it came and a week late. A week late. Yeah. So basically, it was uh, beginning of August to the end of August. Right. So basically, all right. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Mark and I asked just before, so I'll write down this time. The name of that thing again. It's a uh, JCB. It's JCB. JCB. Right. Uh, 110? It's a 110 Hydra dig. And the name of the company was out of Concord, New Hampshire. The name of the rented company was Northland JCB. Northland JCB. Out of Concord, New Hampshire. Okay. And they have several dealerships in New England. There's one in Burling, in the Burlington, Vermont area. Okay. Two in New York, a couple in Massachusetts. Uh, country from Hampshire, I think it's one in Connecticut. How about and, and the manufacturer plant is uh, Georgia. Uh -huh. They have a major factory down there. Do you know where they are, Mass? I don't remember the okay. town. No, I'm but, sure but if you punch in JCB, it lists them all. Right, right I'm sure right it on quick. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. Uh, all right, thanks, Mark. Sure. So, uh, that's all sounds really good. Uh, okay, moving on to communications. First up is email. Um, the only email that I just wanted to note, and it, it's in the uh, in the AP warrant, um, Jeff Nugent at the Wyndham Regional Commission had reached out to us to let us know that he had been told that I guess there was a permit, the stormwater municipal roads permit, um, we didn't pay back in May or something when it was due, but we tracked down the details and it's in the pay warrant this time for us to pay it uh, because that will prevent us from being able to get some grant reimbursement down the road. Um, so we're getting that taken care of. Is that like a $200? It's the $500. Yeah. Um, so that's that's in this batch of AP stuff today. Um, other than that, uh, another thing from Jeff Nugent is that Mark and I applied for this Better Roads grant at the end of last year. Um, it because of COVID, they still haven't awarded those grants, so we still don't know whether we might get this grant or not. Potentially in September, they're going to notify more towns but we don't know if we've gotten it or not gotten it at this point um, but perhaps we will be pleasantly surprised at some point and find out where we got it um, that's kind of it for emails physical mail uh, we got a postcard from vlct about a virtual town fair in that's the one. September, the yep. end of September, beginning of October. This is the replacement for the physical town fair right. they normally do. Um, now it will be done virtually. And then we also got some thing about various emergency supplies, which is um, addressed to Mike Fontaine for uh, dry foods and other uh, cool stuff like that. That was it for physical mail. Uh, moving on to pay orders. First up is the payroll warrants. Um, we'll do the same sort of thing, although I'm going to adapt my process to speed things up. I'm now going to only ask people if you have questions. <laughs> so if you haven't reviewed it, that would be one of the things that you would point out at that point. I'm not going to make you all answer to confusing questions. I'm sorry that I know that was causing problems for people. Um, so payroll warrant, Gwen, do you have any questions on the payroll warrant? No. Bruce, do you have any questions on the payroll warrant? Joseph, do you have any questions on the payroll warrant? No. Shelby, any questions on the payroll warrant? 
Then I'd like to make a motion that we approve payroll warrant 2020-60. Dated August 19, 2020, in the amount of $1,550.10. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving payroll warrant 2020-60, dated August 19, 2020, in the amount of $1,550. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, payroll warrant is approved. Uh, next up is yeah, uh, next up is accounts payable warrant. Um, Gwen, do you have any questions on the accounts payable warrant? No. Bruce, do you have any questions no. on the accounts payable warrant? No, I do not. Okay, also. Joseph, do you have any questions on the accounts payable warrant? No. Shelby, do you have any questions on the accounts payable warrant? No. Nope. All right, then I'd like to make a motion that we approve accounts payable warrant 2020-59, dated August 18th, 2020, in the amount of $21,225.22. Is there a second? I guess I'll second. Seconded by Bruce again. Uh, any discussion? Take a Hearing none, all those in favor of approving accounts payable warrant 2020-59, dated August 18th, 2020, in the amount of $21,225.22, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Then the AP warrant is also approved. Um, which brings us to setting the agenda for September 2nd. So just a reminder, the September 2nd meeting, the first thing on the agenda will be the Salt and Sand Shed presentation by Ron Bell. Ooh. Uh, I still don't know exactly what that will be. My assumption is it will be uh, some document or documents that he'll share um, screen share over Zoom, um, uh, but I will reach out to those guys just to make sure they're uh, prepared for that and give them the meeting details once we have that. So that will be on the agenda. That will maybe take a little bit of time, um, probably not too long, but a bit of time. Uh, we'll revisit the SLP painting and staining bids that we tabled tonight. Um, the other thing I'm going to put on there for uh, next meeting, and I will produce a draft of it prior to that, is um, it's time for us to get the plowing and sand bids ready to publish. Um, so I think we should put that on that agenda. Um, so we'll have a draft of those. Uh, to hopefully approve and put it before September, right? For 16th, or you want to go? Yeah, although, well, I'm just looking at the calendar now and I'm, I'm actually wondering. We might actually, I might actually push that back to the 16th just because Labor Day weekend is um, um, not that, again, I, th I think we all know who the likely one or possibly two vendors are to bid on this, but still, uh, it might not make sense to publish them Labor Day weekend, so maybe we'll push that back to the 16th to have them open the first, at the first meeting in October. That's kind of the timing that we've typically yeah. done, yep. I think. Yep. Um, uh, so maybe we'll push that. I, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll give it a little bit of thought. Um, Anything else, um, Gwen, that you can think of for the agenda for September 2nd other than the normal stuff? No. Bruce, anything else you can think of for the agenda other than the normal stuff? No, okay. And okay. yes, building update would okay. be one of those things. Uh, the property taxes may be an issue. Property taxes. <clears throat> right. I yeah. S yeah, we'll put it on there. Yeah, right. I'll put that on as well. Um, 
Uh, Joseph, anything else you can think of for the agenda for September 2nd? No. Shelby, anything for you that you can think of for the agenda? Uh, no. Okay, then um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Early. I second. But Bruce is going to make that motion anyway. <laughs> I'm going to say Bruce made the motion to adjourn. It was seconded by Gwen. Uh, any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned at 825.